With a couple of exceptions, every furniture item in the game is stored on sprite sheets. When one of these kinds of objects are destroyed, the game tries to drop an item depending on which sprite is selected. When we put the wooden door into the bass statue's hitbox and then turn the statue off, it shoved everything four tiles to the right, turning the wooden door into a crystal door. The next transmutation shoved it another four tiles, and the game decided that this location drops the item with an ID value of 721, tungsten brick wall. This method is great, but having access to all the doors is necessary to get all of the available items, so how do we go up and down the sprite sheet? Going up and down is a lot more complicated than going to the right, but it all begins with campfire glitch offset. Have a deactivated bass statue, place a campfire here, then turn on the statue to get this glitched out campfire. When you right click on the top right tile of the campfire, everything in this 3x2 field will alternate going up and down their sprite sheets. The honey platform first goes upwards into a skyware platform, then the next direction is down so it goes back into a honey platform, the next direction is up so it turns back into a skyware platform. But if you break it and place a new honey platform, the next direction is still down, so it'll go downwards into a Martian platform. Torches work a little bit differently. If we place a normal torch here, and remember the direction is still down, it'll turn into halfway between a blue and a red torch, and when broken it drops a blue one. The first crucial thing about this glitch is that not all of these six tiles are equal. The top left one has some very special properties when it interacts with doors or platforms. If we place a door in a place that doesn't intersect this top left tile, it just goes back and forth like we saw before. But if it does go through the tile, then it keeps going. Both of these tiles are going up the sprite sheet two at a time, just like the platforms did. If we use a meteorite door, for example, then they first go to the bottom two tiles of the Martian door, making a fragile door, then the top of the Martian door and the bottom of the slime door, making a mixed door, then the top two tiles of the slime door, making a stable door. This cycle of fragile, mixed, and stable continues until it reaches the top of the sprite sheet. Obtaining the door depends on what state it's in, but it's generally best to mine the middle tile. For a fragile door, you get the new door as well as the door you originally started with. For a mixed door, you get both of the two new doors. For a stable door, you just get the new door. The crucial detail is that everything else in the 3x2 field copies whatever the top left tile is doing. When this tile goes 36 pixels up, everything else goes 36 pixels up. So we can use a door or a platform here as a sort of fuel, with stuff farther down the sprite sheet burning for longer. If we place a planter box and a torch back here, and either source of fuel in the top left, then clicking on the campfire will make everything go up by 36 pixels. After a second click, the torch has run off the top of its sprite sheet and turned into this mess, which is actually a fairy bell. Right click again, and now the planter box has gone off its sprite sheet as well. It doesn't show it, but this is actually a money trough. Torches and planter boxes are the only things that give you new items once you go vertically off their sprite sheets. You can keep going, but you will eventually run out of fuel. Whichever fuel you're using, it'll eventually reach the top of its sprite sheet, and then it'll alternate back and forth. If it's a door, get it to a stable door before mining it. Using this method, you can go all the way down to item ID 1 with either torches or planter boxes. Planter boxes skip by 2 tiles each time, but torches skip by 1.63 repeating. This is because each torch takes up 22 pixels on the sprite sheet, rather than the standard 18. I've documented all of this on the same spreadsheet that I showed in the last video. Select the torches sheet and scroll down to line 427. These yellow boxes are where each torch starts, then they go up from here. If you want to get a mithril brick for instance, you can immediately see that using a normal torch won't work. Your best bet is a blue torch, and if not that, then a green torch. You don't want to use something like an ice torch, as it takes several more clicks. With a distance this short, you can just easily count out 7 clicks, but for longer distances, you'll want to measure it differently. Back up at the top of the page, you can select a certain door or platform, and the sheet will show how many full burns you need to do, plus the remainder. So for example, let's use a really bad door, like a rich mahogany one. You can see that mithril brick now says 2 plus 1 when using a blue torch. Place down the door and the torch, then do one full burn, get it to stable. Do another, get it to stable and then click once more to get the mithril brick. There is also a way to go down the sprite sheet, increasing the item ID, but it's much, much slower. When any item gets to the end of its sprite sheet, it just goes back and forth. Together, the back and the forth isn't useful, but isolating one part is. With a normal torch in the top left spot, place the items you want to go down the sprite sheet on somewhere else in the 3x2 field. Click on the campfire, then destroy the torch, place it again. Click on the campfire, destroy the torch, place it again. Every time you do this, you'll go down the sprite sheet by 36 pixels. 
First you have to get through all the torches, so it's best to start with something like a jungle torch. And once you go off the sheet, you'll start getting new items, beginning at item ID value 448. This works just like going up the sheet, it's just very slow. This means that you can now technically transmute any item in the game. There are still a lot more things to talk about. Some items are still very slow to get, everything still works very linearly, and door transmutations are still very simple. In the following videos, I'll address all of these and more. But for now, enjoy these glitches!